Welcome to the 21st Sports Breakdown for the May 22nd, 2015 Game 2 from the Eastern Conference Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Atlanta Hawks for these 2015 NBA playoffs. So the Cavs won the first game on the road in Atlanta and now the Hawks were hoping to split before having to go to Cleveland for Game 3. Kyrie Irvin was not playing in this game and during the regular season the Cavs were just 1-6 without Kyrie. So the Hawks actually led twice in the first quarter as Kyle Korver hit a three-pointer to start the game to make it 3-0 Atlanta and then Korver hit a pair of free throws to give the Hawks the lead 17-15 with less than three minutes left in the first. The Cavs took the lead right back and finished the first with an 11-4 run to make it 26-21. LeBron James and J.R. Smith scored all 11 points of the run including JR's only three pointer of game two after hitting eight three pointers in game one. LeBron finished the first quarter with 13 points. Then in the second, James Jones started things off with his first three-pointer of the game and of the quarter. He hit three three-pointers in this game, and they all came in the second quarter. Cleveland pushed their lead to double digits early in the second, but the Hawks went on a 10-2 run to make it a two-point game. 35-33 capped off by a layup from Paul Millsap with three and a half minutes left in the second. About a minute later, LeBron made his first points of the second quarter, then added two more a minute after that, giving him 17 points in the first half with the score now 40-33 to with about five and a half minutes left before intermission. At this point, LeBron had no assist with about five minutes left in the second quarter. King James then shifted his game to facilitate mode, setting the table with four assists in the final five minutes of the first half, all of which resulted in three-pointers for the Cavs, who would go into halftime up 54-49, despite excellent long-range shooting, as the Hawks actually outscored the Cavs in the final five minutes of the second quarter, 16-4 to keep it a single digit game as they trailed the Cavs by five points at the half. So then in the third quarter, LeBron James continued to not really put up field goals as he did not attempt a field goal in the last five minutes of the second quarter and then for the first four plus minutes of the second half in the third quarter but he did continue to set up the trifectas as he assisted on his fifth sixth and seventh three pointers for his teammates and then with five and a half left in the third he had his eighth assisted three pointer and that made it 73 to 56 as Shumper drained the tray. Cleveland led by as many as 20 points in the third and LeBron James scored or assisted on 25 of the 30 points for the Cavs in the third quarter. Then with about a minute and a half left in the third, bad news for Hawks fans, Kyle Korver goes down and would leave the game. Damari Carroll was injured late in game one and you could see how it affected him on defense and now the Hawks have Korver having to go to the locker room we don't know what his status is as of yet moving on in this series. But after three quarters of play, the score was 84-66 as the Cavs led by 18. LeBron had already assisted eight three-pointers in this game going into the fourth. He almost got his ninth assisted three when Della Vadova knocked down a 22-footer in the fourth. That made it 91-74 for King James. That was his 10th assist overall in the game. And then the King got his 11th assist with a dish to Tristan Thompson to make it 93-74 with the Cavs up by 19 points with less than five minutes left in the game. LeBron drew a foul about two minutes later and scored Cleveland's final point on a free throw, and that made it 94-75. The game came to a close three minutes later with the final score 94-82 Cleveland. So LeBron James with a monster performance as he ends up actually scoring or assisting on 60 points for the Cavs in this game. 
So it's nearly two thirds of their points were either scored or facilitated by the King. And now the Cavs are up 2-0 in this series in the Eastern Conference Finals over the Hawks. This is actually the Hawks' first Eastern Conference Finals appearance. This is the last time they got this deep into the playoffs. There actually weren't conferences yet in basketball. As it was uh, conferences were made in '72, but. In the all-time records of the playoffs, the Hawks are actually down. They are 0-16 whenever they were down 2-0 in a playoff series. So they have never come back from a 2-0 deficit in their playoff franchise history. And LeBron James, whether it be with the Cavs or with the Miami Heat, LeBron James' teams are 14-0 all-time when they go up 2-0 in a playoff series, and LeBron is actually known as the king of the sweeps. Although, I think the Hawks might get one game in the series, but they do look pretty much to be done, as that's how the numbers bear out. You actually look at uh, 19 of 22 teams that have gone down 2-0 when they started with home field advantage, well, home court advantage. <laughs> They're not playing basketball on the field. But with a home court advantage, any team that lost the first two games on the road, 19 of those teams lost the series. Only three teams have ever come back after losing the first two games of a series at home. And the last time that was done was actually 10 years ago. The Dallas Mavericks beat the Houston Rockets in seven games. And then in uh, 94, the Houston Rockets beat the Phoenix Suns in seven games after losing the first two in Houston. And way back in 1969, the San Francisco Warriors, before they moved to Golden State, they beat the Lakers in the first two games, but then the Los Angeles Lakers came back to win the next six game or the next four games to win that series in six. So historically speaking, only three teams have ever come back to win the series after losing the first two at home and that's what the Hawks are going to have to do if they want to go on to the finals it looks like LeBron James is going back to the finals this is his fifth conference finals in a row looks like he's going to be going back to the NBA finals for the fifth year in a row but in this game LeBron James 30 points 9 rebounds 11 assists and a block that's just one rebound shy of a triple double for King James so a huge performance by LeBron and Amon Schumpert he had 16 points 4 rebounds 1 steal Timothy Mozgov with 10 points 7 rebounds Tristan Thompson, 7 points, 16 rebounds, and 2 assists. Della Vadova, 11 points, 6 boards, 4 assists, and a steal. He also was coming up huge on defense as he was shutting down the backcourt of the Hawks. As he was holding them to, I think it was about 25% shooting when he was guarding the guards of the Hawks. And off the bench, James Jones, he had nine points, all coming off of three-pointers in the second quarter as he was three for five from downtown, scoring those nine points. He also had two boards, two steals, and a block. J.R. Smith, nine points in the game. He had two rebounds, one assist, and two steals. Sean Marion got in there, and he actually uh, he was just in there for six minutes, but he did get two points, one rebound, and one assist in this game. And for the Hawks, their starters, actually, their leading scorer among their starters was a three-way tie between Horford, Teague, and Corfer, who all had 12 points. And Corver left in the final minute and a half in the third quarter. Their leading scorer actually was Schroeder, Schroeder, who came off the bench and had 13 points, although he was just 6 for 11 in the game. Three rebounds, one assist for Schroeder off the bench. They said Horford, Teague, and Corford all had 12 points. Horford had six rebounds, two assists, one steal, and a block. Teague, to go with his 12, had three rebounds, six assists, one steal, and two blocks. And Corver before he left with those 12 points, had one rebound, one assist, and one steal. Damari Carroll, just six points, three rebounds, well below his normal numbers. As you could tell, that he was not 100% thought they should have rested him in this game. I understand it's the Eastern Conference Finals, but with the numbers he put up and with the game that LeBron had, you could see that it would have been better just to not have Carroll on the court. 
and maybe let, maybe his knee would heal a little bit for game three. You know, if you're going to lose anyway, might as well try to get him healthy for the next game to try to win at least one, try to get in the series, but it looks to be over. Paul Millsap had four points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals. Off the bench, had a couple players with seven points. As Shelvin Mack and Kent Bazemore both had seven points. Shelvin Mack had three rebounds, one assist, and Bazemore had two rebounds and one steal. Mike Scott, six points, seven boards, one assist, and a steal. So that was the main numbers for the Hawks. And let's look at uh, the points overall, well, how it broke down statistically speaking, how they scored. They actually both had 33 field goals in the game and shot relatively the same percentage, although the Cavs about a you know one and a half percent higher, or so is 1.6 percent to be exact. But 43.4 percent from the field for Cleveland, 41.8 for Atlanta. It was the three pointers though that really made the difference? Is they had twice as many shots that they hit from downtown, hitting 12 of 30 for 40 percent, whereas the Hawks just hit six of 26 for 23.1 percent. And from the foul line, they actually attempted twice as many free throws as the Hawks, hitting 16 of 26 for a 61.5 percent versus 10 of 13 for a 76.9 percent for the Hawks. Even though they didn't really hit a high percentage, but just going to the line that many times. And they also outboarded them on the offense and defensive glass, getting four more offensive rebounds and four more defensive rebounds. So they had eight more total rebounds at 47 to 39 overall. And then they also had more assists, 17 to 5, although the Hawks narrowly had more steals with 7 to 6. And the Cavs had more blocks, 4 to 3. But they were just getting the boards down the paint, you know, Mozgov. And especially Tristan Thompson, he had a monster game with 16 rebounds, 11 of which came on the defensive glass and 5 on the offensive glass as he led both teams with the most offensive rebounds and the most defensive rebounds and the most total rebounds. So Tristan Thompson continuing to be a good presence for the Cavs down low in the paint. And LeBron James just going off in this game, taking control, being whatever they needed him to be. When they needed him to be a scorer, he was a scorer. When they needed him to facilitate the offense, he did just that. Is he just stopped taking shots and just kept passing the ball every time they thought LeBron was going to be going to the hoop and they'd bring that extra defender over to defend the king? He dish it out for the three, whether it was Della Vadova, whether it was James Jones or Shumpert. Shumpert, four or six from three point land. James Jones, three for five. J.R. Smith hit one, Del Vidova hit two, and LeBron hit two as well. So they were just draining those threes. As that has become somewhat of a trend in basketball over the last few years, is it's all about the three point shot these days. And the Cavs were hitting them. They were letting them go, letting them fly, and they were dropping. And LeBron James, 60 points that he facilitated or scored. So. He just had an amazing performance. He proves once again why he is considered to be arguably the best player ever. It's definitely in the argument for sure. If the Cavs go on to win the finals this year, I'd say that right there would seal the argument. He's better than Jordan. I already think he is. But this would go a long way towards it, of course. He's going to have his work cut out for him. They still have to get through the series. It's not quite over, although it's about as close to over as it is going to be or could be. And it's just a matter of time at this point. Is uh, At least that's statistically speaking where we're at right now. And when you look at really the Hawks, they're not 100%. Maybe if they were 100%, they would have a chance for a comeback. I thought maybe they had a chance in this series, you know, if they were at 100%. But as soon as I saw Damari Carroll go down in game one, I was like, that's the series right there. It's all over. Even though, thankfully, it was just a sprain. I, I really think it was a bad decision for them to have Damari Carroll play in this game. They really should have. I mean, that you saw he really couldn't do anything. Usually, he's a guy who's going to get you 2010, but he didn't even get double digits on either end. Or you know, it's just he couldn't stop LeBron either. I mean, it was pretty obvious, and I don't know why they had him out there for you know 34 minutes. He actually had more minutes than anybody else. I mean, I know the guy's tough. 
he's got heart and i respect that for sure i just wish they would actually kept him off the court to give him a chance to be a hundred percent even though i mean i don't know if that's even possible if it would even have made a difference maybe keeping him out the game wouldn't even have mattered he still wouldn't have been a hundred percent for game three but he couldn't have i mean i really couldn't hurt to at least try to give him that extra time you know definitely he could have possibly made a difference but now it's over and without Corver, that just really seals it is he's already been the guy that most teams key on is because if Corver gets hot and starts straining those threes for the hawks then you know that's really where their offense you know can put up big points but you've seen all playoffs long teams have just been keying on Corver, making sure to get him on the perimeter and not let him get off those long range shots and by shutting him down, it keeps the games closer because he is the guy who actually, you know, can get a hot hand for them. But so he's been being double teamed a lot in this playoffs. And now with Al Korver and that threat, they really don't have uh, much of a perimeter game to speak of. As you actually saw in the game, most of their points came in the paint. As 48 of their points came down low. So we'll see what happens, but I don't know. I think maybe they can win one game, maybe, but they're going to have their work cut out for them. And King James is known for sweeping teams, and he showed here, you know, even without Kyrie, without Love, as long as you got James. And then give credit to the rest of the Cavs is, you know, they're right there with them, and he was feeding them. They're playing along with them, whatever they need him to be, whatever he needed them to be. It all worked out, and there was, that's teamwork right there. So even though LeBron just taking over at the same time, he still can't really uh, do that by himself. He does need the other guys there, whether they're stars, whether they're big names, or whether they're role players. So, And that's even uh, James Jones was saying basically that after the game in the press conference. But it was – it really just – this is it. It's over. Game two, they go up to well. And they, LeBron's never lost after going up 2-0. And the Hawks have never won after going down 2-0. So that's about that. Let me know, though, what you think in the comments section below. The final score in Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Cleveland 94, Atlanta 82. Thank you very much for listening. It is appreciated. I hope you're having a good day. And have a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.